I want to try something new, and that's cutting open these glass bottles. So I've bought myself this glass cutter. But to be able to score a perfect line around a bottle, I'm going to need to make myself a jig. So this is a great project to use up some scraps. I'm going to need to mount the glass cutter into this bit of wood. So first I determine what size the glass cutter is and a 12 mil hole should be perfect. And luckily I have a force in a bit that size so I can get that drilled into the wood. Now the body of the cutter is 12 mil, but it has the cutter at one end and then a bulbous bit at the other. So I need to get both of those unscrewed and then it's going to fit in the hole very tightly. So I can just get it in and tap it into place and that should be fine. With it really wedged in there, I can get the two ends put back into place. I want this arm to be able to move and to pivot. So I'm going to mount it on a bit of 10 mil threaded rod. So I'm going to get a 10 mil hole drilled in it and then the rod can go through. This rod is going to need to mount something and what I've got is some 18 mil thick MDF. I can get the rod on there and mark out how long I need the MDF to be and then I can take it over to the table saw and get it cut down. So this wood needs a couple of ears for the rod to mount onto and then a bit cut away so it's got room to pivot. So I get that marked out and then I can take it to the bandsaw and get the waste cut out. With it cut out, I can then get it mounted into the vise so I can drill some 10 mil holes through those two ear bits. The threaded rod can now be poked in through the hole and I get a wing nut on and then I get a washer on and then that arm on. The other side of the arm gets another washer and another wing nut and then it can be pushed through the other hole at the other end. To lock it in place on the ends, I get a washer on and a nylon locking nut and then get it all tightened down. So now this cutting head can move up and down, but you can wind these wing nuts in and out and move it along to adjust the position on the rod. This bit now needs mounting to a base and I've got another bit of 18 mil MDF. And going from my scrap pile, I found this little angled off cut. So I can work out how long it needs to be and then take it to the table saw and the mitre gauge and get it cut down. I get some wood glue, put on the back of the angle piece and then I can get it mounted to the back of the cutter head piece. And I'm just gonna secure it into place there with a couple of screws going through the front. Some glue can then go on the underside of this and get it put on the base and drive some screws in from the underside to lock it in. Now, this is all made out of scraps. It's definitely not pretty, but hopefully it will work. Now, I need something to support the bottles when I cut them. So I'm gonna mark out a couple of lines on the base and then I'm gonna mount some of these casters. These are rubberized, so I hope they'll grip the bottles quite well. And they come with some screws and I just drive them down into the base. So you can see, Bottle goes on, head contacts it there, but I need a stop. The stop will just help me get the bottles in the same place every time. So I cut down a couple of scraps of wood and get them glued and screwed together at 90 degrees to each other. But I wanna make sure they are at 90. So I take another bit of scrap back to the table saw, change the mitre gauge to 45 degrees and cut a little piece down. This little support can then get glued and screwed onto the back of this stop. 
Now, this is a very simple thing, and maybe in the future I'll think of a cleverer way of doing it, but for now, this should work absolutely fine. So, time for a test cut. I mark with a sharpie where I want the cut to go, and I get the bottle on the rollers. The stop can be butted up against the bottom of the bottle, and I get a clamp on to hold the stop in place, but it also holds the whole jig to the bench. I loosen off the wing nuts on the cutter head, move it till I get it on the position of the line I've drawn, and then I can get everything tightened up. Now for the cut. I push down on the cutter until it's contacting the bottle with a bit of light pressure, and then spin the bottle until my lines meet up. Now this doesn't actually cut the bottle open, it just scores it. To break it, I'm going to use thermal shock. So I've got some hot water and some cold water. So first, dunk it in the hot water, and then dunk it in the cold water. And you can kind of hear it cracking while you do this. So I just go back and forth a few times, and I decide I'm just going to do one bottle at a time, as two was a bit ambitious, and you can see it snaps. Now, not quite perfect, but I did get better at this. To clean it all up, I've got another bit of MDF to use as a flat surface and some wet and dry paper, and then I just rub the bottles on it until I've got a nice smooth finish. So it definitely works, I've just not got the technique yet. Getting an even score all the way around is hard, especially as I've started with bottles that um, they kind of taper in. So I think I'm next going to try a wine bottle that's more of a square side. Uh, also getting them to break on the line, I don't know if I need to score deeper. Anyway, I know I'm going to get it, it's just going to be a bit of a learning curve. Uh, so this is because I have a friend who wants to make some candles in old wine bottles. So I'm going to try and get it perfected and cut some open for them. Luckily, I have a pretty endless supply of uh, empty alcohol bottles. So I'll let you know how we get on, and if we successfully make some candles, I'll stick some pictures up on Instagram. I'll put a link down below to the glass cutter on the Tools I Use page. They're affiliate links, so any clicks are greatly appreciated. So thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos.